Let's do a lab to test the conservation of energy. What we're going to do is we're going to give an object a potential energy and then we are going to allow it to drop so that it gains kinetic energy and we're going to calculate the, the energy at both places and see if the total energy remains the same. All right? For that, you remember, your potential energy. How do we calculate potential energy? Potential energy is calculated as U equal to MGH. So make a note of this, because I'm going to erase this. Take a note of this, and kinetic energy is one half MV squared. All right, so keep track of this. We are going to calculate the potential energy and kinetic energy of an object at different places to prove or to test the conservation of energy principle. All right, let's do that. Give me a second uh, to set up the lab and I'll be with you in a minute. What we're going to do is to use a pendulum. Now, what is a pendulum? Do you know what a pendulum is? Now, this is a pendulum that I can set into oscillation to move back and forth. Now, when the pendulum oscillates, can you see the pendulum oscillating? Now, you raise it to a height, giving it potential energy. And now, let me keep it like this. You raise the pendulum to a height, giving it potential energy. And when you let it go, it's going to fall, gaining kinetic energy. Now, what, happened in, what happens in this case is potential energy at this point becomes kinetic energy at the bottom. And when it reaches here, because it has a speed, that kinetic energy is going to give potential energy. Now, we have what the oscillation here. Now here, potential energy, kinetic energy, potential energy. Now the energy gets converted continuously. All right, now this is a good example of conservation of energy. The potential energy here becomes kinetic energy. You can see if I keep my hand, I get hit by that kinetic energy. Now if my hand is not there, because of the speed it acquires, it goes and climbs to the other extreme. So energy gets converted to potential, to kinetic, to potential, to kinetic, and the energy conversion happens continuously. And now, I have a, an animation here. Watch the setup of a pendulum like this. Now watch how the pendulum oscillates. The pendulum oscillates back and forth. Is that right? Right. Now the pendulum climbs to a height. It has potential energy. What's the potential energy? Its potential energy is now gradually gets converted to kinetic energy. When it comes here, all the energy is kinetic and it climbs to the gaining potential energy. You can actually measure. Now here, all the energy is potential. And now, potential energy is going to, yes, decrease kinetic energy, increases. All the energy is kinetic here. I want you to watch this very carefully. Look at how the conservation of energy works. Now, potential energy and kinetic energy is continuously changed from one form to the other. So its potential energy now is U equal to MGH at the height H. If it is at a height H, the potential energy is MGH. Here, all the energy is potential, that is equal to MGH. When you leave the bulb, it falls to the lowest position. All the energy here is kinetic. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to set up the pendulum and do this experiment. 
We will measure its speed using a photo gate at the lowest point. Now, let me tell you how we're going to measure the speed. Now, we are going to allow, you have seen the photo gate that we have been using. We're going to allow the pendulum bob, we're going to allow the pendulum bob to go through a photo gate and measure the time taken for it to go through. Then we can calculate the speed of this by dividing the diameter of the ball by the time taken. The time will be measured by the clock. So in the experiment, you will be measuring the speed of this. Now, how do you calculate the speed? I want you to make a note of that. Speed is calculated like this. So we will calculate speed equal to diameter of the ball divided by the time. I'm going to give you the diameter of the ball. The diameter of the ball is 0.04 meter and the time you will be measuring. And we will use this formula, speed of the ball is the diameter of the ball divided by the time taken by the ball to go through the photo gate. I'll set it up in a minute. And that will give me the diameter is 0.04 meter and the time we will measure using the photo gate. And that way we will calculate the speed of the, the speed of the ball and we will calculate the kinetic energy. All right, um, I'll be setting up that. In All right, watch the experimental setup. I want you to watch it carefully and see how to fill in various uh, quantities. Now, first of all, I'm going to keep the ball of the pendulum at a height h, which I'm going to measure and give it to you. In other words, when I move it from here, what is the height I'm going to raise it? I will give you that height over there, and you will then calculate its potential energy using potential energy equal to mgh. That means we need to start with the mass of the ball. Now, I started the mass, I, I measured the mass of the ball, and I'm going to write it down here. Now, you got your worksheet, so write down the mass of the ball in your worksheet. I'm going to write it there. It is 0.3 kilogram. The mass of the ball is 0.3 kilogram and the diameter of the bob is 0.04 meter. Those are the two values you need to know. The mass of the bob is 0.3 kilogram, its diameter is 0.4 meter, and we will measure the speed what we're going to do is we're going to measure the speed as it goes through the photo gate. The time taken will be registered here and the diameter, you see that's the distance during that time. So once you know the diameter, the speed of the bob will be that diameter divided by the time. In other words, it will be 0.04 divided by the time we measure. I'm going to do one run and show it to you and calculate the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Now, I'm, I'm going to do the first run and show you how to deal with the data. All right? Now, I'm going to start by pulling this bob up. You know, uh, this is the gate. I just moved it a little to make it a little more accurate. So that's the gate there. I'm going to move the bob up by 10 centimeter. 10 centimeter is 0.1 meter. So the height is going to be 0.1 meter and we will calculate the potential energy. And I will fill up my data like this. H is 0.1 meter. 
So the potential energy, I'm going to calculate it below the table. Potential energy U equal to MGH. Now what is the mass of the bob? I give you the mass of the bob as 0.3 kilogram. So that will be 0.3 times 9.8 times H is 0.1. Can you calculate that for me? 0.3 times 9.8 times 0.1 is 0 0.29 joules. So my potential energy is 0 0.29 joules. And now I'm going to measure the time for that I need the diameter. I told you the diameter is 0.04 meter. All right. I'm going to raise, first of all, let me reset the clock. I'm going to raise the bob to 10 centimeter. You can see I have raised the bob now at just a height of 10 centimeter. And I'm going to leave it. Let's see what the clock reads. The clock reads 0 0.0281. All right. I'm going to use that time. The time is 0 .0, 0 0.0281. Therefore, look at the way I'm going to calculate the velocity. V equal to the diameter of the ball divided by the time. That will be 0 0.04 meter divided by 0 0.028 second. Can you calculate that for me? 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.028 is 1.4. So the speed of the ball is 1.4 meter per second. So the ball had potential energy here. How much is the potential energy? 0.29. And when we left it, all that potential energy became kinetic energy at this position where I'm showing and we measured the velocity at that position and the velocity is 1.4 meter per second let's calculate the kinetic energy kinetic energy is one half of m v squared so look where i'm going to calculate can you see that i calculated the velocity here i'm going to calculate the kinetic energy at the bottom k equal to one half m v squared. M is 0.3. V squared is 1.4 squared. And on the calculator, type in one half as 0.5 times 0.3 times 1.4 squared is 0.29. Now, isn't that? A good agreement, the kinetic energy is 0.29 joules. Now, what that means is all the potential energy at this height now got converted to kinetic energy. You see, look at the conservation of energy. All the potential energy at that height is converted to kinetic energy. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four more trials. I will raise it to different heights. Now, let me see how much is the maximum height I can actually go. Well, let's see. I'm going to make the height now 15 centimeter. In other words, 0.15. All right, I'm going to make the height 0.15 and I'm going to leave this, all these columns for you. Calculate the potential energy and now measure the time. I'm going to, let me reset the clock and let's measure the time when I, well, 
The height is now 15 centimeter and you can see I have a ruler here to measure it. So the height is 15 centimeter. I'm going to leave it. What is the time? 0 0.0203. All right, have you write, written it down? 0 0.0203 is the time. 0 0.0203. Okay, I want you to calculate the speed of the ball as it passes the gate and calculate the kinetic energy and see how the potential energy compares with the kinetic energy. All right, I'm now going to take the height to 20 centimeter. All right, let me reset the clock. I'm going to make the height 0.2 meter. So this is going to be 0.2 meter. All right, I'm going to raise it to 20 centimeter. There it is, 20 centimeter. And uh, the clock is reset. All right, let's see. I'm going to leave it, measure the time. Here we are. The time is 0 0.0197. 0 0.0197 is the time. Okay, well, the time now got changed because the pendulum bob has been going back and forth inside the gate. But our measured time is 0 0.0197. And I want you to calculate the speed of the bob and its kinetic energy. Okay, I'm going to now raise it to uh, 0 0.25, 25 centimeter, 0 0.25 meter. Calculate the potential energy. So you must calculate the potential energy. And now let's measure the speed as it passes the gate. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to raise it to point 0.3, that will be, where will that be? That will be point 0.25, 52, Let's see if I can get it. There I have a point two five. I'm going to leave. There you are. Now the height is twenty five centimeter. My clock is not reset. All right. Let's see how it's going to work. Well, this time I got point zero zero seven three. All right, let's take that one, 0 0.0073. I got two values, all right? I want you to take the average of those two values. So one value is 0 0.021, the other value is 0 0.0073, all right? So for this height, I got two time values because of the mess up. I want you to take the average of these two values. I hope you understand. I got two values there. Find the average of those two values as the time there. All right, I'm going to try one more. That is uh, 0.3. And let's see if I can do that. It's going to be pretty difficult, but uh, we will try. Now I'm going to raise it to 0.3. There I am at point three. Can you see where I am? I'm far out there. And let's see if we can get a measurement made. Point three. And there we go. The time is point zero zero three five. Point zero zero three five. That is the time. That would be point zero zero three five. That is when the height is 0.3 meter. All right. We've got all the measurements we need. 
So we have all the measurements. I have given the heights, calculate the potential energy for each height, and we have measured the time taken by the pendulum bob to pass through the photo gate, and knowing the diameter, divide the diameter by that time to obtain the speed and calculate the kinetic energy. And if the conservation of energy is true, the amount of potential energy must be very nearly equal to the, the kinetic energy. Well, we have experimental error all the time, is that right? But you can see my first trial was very good. So what do I want you to do? Complete this and complete your worksheet and email it to me. And that's what I want you to do. And that is a good lab.